I wanted to talk a little bit about grouping and resequencing, and these are kind of odd to have together, but uh, they work kind of well together in this demo. Um, so I wanted to, to group them in the same video. First of all, we'll talk about grouping, which is kind of grabbing multiple wireframe elements and, and grouping them together so that if you select one, you'll select all of them. So this is really handy um, for keeping maybe a design uh, grouped with its outline. So if you click on one and, and move it, you'll actually move the whole thing so you don't accidentally uh, misalign the, the outline. Um, in this instance, we'll be grouping all the pieces of lettering. So um, it's just uh, uh, elements that make up letters. Um, they aren't keyboard lettering, they're just digitized letters. So if you got something from a digitizer, or if you did it yourself, um, you could group those pieces together so that if you click on an element of a letter, you get the whole thing. And then afterwards, um, we'll take this design that was digitized, um, unfortunately, for a left chest and resequence it so that it will sew uh, more appropriately on a cap. So first off, we have this design. And like I said, this was digitized um, as a left chest design. And uh, the digitizer wasn't thinking about multiple applications. And I say the digitizer, I think I was probably the digitizer that did this. Um, but I think I did it to be a really good bad example. Um, it is digitized, so if I play uh, this sewing out here, I'll go into 3D so you can see it a little bit better. If I play this sewing out, it is sewing from left to right, and it is sewing from the top down. And if we wanted to sew this for a cap, we would want to sew away from those anchor points in the cap, which would be that center seam, so we want to sew from the center out we would want to also sew um, from the bottom up to sew away from that bill so that any ripple of material is going to be pushed to the back of the cap where it's not gonna do any damage and it's not going to kind of make things line up funny. So if I look at my wireframe elements, like I said, these are all just individual wireframe elements. This was digitized um, as as just complete digi uh, digitizing, it is not keyboard lettering at all. Um, so when I select one piece, I'm not going to get all of the lettering. I'm not going to get even a single letter. I'm just going to get that one element. So since we're going to be resequencing this, it would be handy if I could just grab that and uh, move it in the sequence without having to grab all of the pieces. So one of the really easy ways to do that is to click and drag a box, make sure that I get all the pieces associated with it. So I'm looking over in the project view, I can see that everything's highlighted the way that I uh, want it, everything's in there. That looks pretty great to me. So I'm going to go ahead and group this and I'm gonna just click on the group button and that's gonna group it. Uh, it's gonna show it as a number one, that's just the first group I made today. If I click anywhere, here, I'll take it out of 3D so you can now see it highlight a little bit more. If I click anywhere on that letter, I'm going to get the whole thing. So now I'm getting the entire group. So here I'm getting individual pieces. Here I get the whole thing. All right, so let's do that again. Um, this time I'm going to do it with the A. So I'm going to click and drag a box around the A. I didn't get the whole thing, so I'm going to do it again. There we go. So it's important when I'm clicking and dragging a box that I get kind of the whole element within my box. All right, I'm gonna group that. All right, um, group and ungroup are also available under the object dropdown. Now, um, if you wanted, you could set up a keyboard shortcut for this, and as I'm gonna be doing this a lot, I would really like to do that. So I'm gonna to go to Tools and Accelerator Editor, and I'm gonna type in group. So now I have group selected. And then I think I'm going to set that up as control G. I'm going to hit assign. So now that's there. And then I'm going to go to ungroup. And I think I'm going to set that up as control shift G. And then I'm going to hit assign and OK. So now I can go through and use my keyboard shortcuts instead of clicking on the button or right clicking or any of that. So now I'm going to click and drag a box around my W. That's all one piece, but I'm going to go ahead and grab the trim with it. 
So I hit Control G on my keyboard and that makes that group. There we go, I got the whole R group. And now I can start resequencing. Um, I could go ahead and group all the letters. I don't have to. Um, since there's trims in between them all, you can also see that you can just click on one, hold shift, and click on the next to grab everything. So it's completely up to you how you wanna how you wanna do that. But um, let's start to resequence. So I'm gonna I'm gonna collapse this down. I'm gonna turn off auto merge just for a minute um, because. I'm going to be resequencing things um, and I want to be able to grab by the color block. I'm most likely going to end up with multiple identical color blocks back to back for just a minute before I'm done resequencing. Um, so let's go ahead and change that out. I'm going to drag this down. I want this to sew last, so I'm gonna click and drag. I'm gonna drag that down. All right, this piece, I'm going to click and drag up so that it is sewing first. So now I am sewing high school first and then the line and then the city. Okay, so at least I'm pushing away from the bill. Uh, now I need to push away from that center seam. Okay, well, if I put my origin on, I can see at least what the middle is. Now here's something that's a little bit different that I tend to do. Um, if I have a break that is close to the center, you'll often see me choose to sew from the break to one side and then the other. It doesn't have to be exactly on center um, to be helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and sew school from left to right, and I'm going to sew high from right to left. Um, if there does happen to be a ripple that shows up, it will most likely show up between the words instead of between uh, individual letters. Um, and that is a lot easier to just mistake for a slightly wider space. So um, I, I've said it, I don't know how many times, but um, for me, um, a lot of embroidery is not being perfect. It's about hiding the fact that you're not. So if I get a slight push and the, the spacing between the words just gets slightly bigger, nobody's going to notice. The sew out's going to be beautiful. Um, so I'm really good with that. And my chances of having success with that are a little bit higher than just having a slight space between my just like the S and the C in this case, or the C and the H, depending on where you chose to break it. Um, so I'm definitely gonna choose to do that. All right, so let's change how high sews. So I'm going to grab that last H. There we go. So I'm going to grab the H and the trim that comes after it, and I'm going to drag it up in the stitch list so that it sews first. Now I'm going to drag the G and the trim after it. I'm going to drag it up in the list, and I'm going to insert it after that trim. So now it's sewing this H and then this G, and then I'll grab the I and drag it up in the list. So now, if I look at the bottom, it's sewing the H, the G, the I, the H, and then it's sewing school. There we go. Um, with this bar, it's one element. Um, I'm not going to sew one side and then trim and then sew the other side. I'm better off just stabilizing the area with some underlay and then sewing it. But now I need to deal with Lawrence. So I've got the R, the R's in the middle. I want to sew it first. So I'm going to drag it up in the list to the top of the color block. Then I'll grab the W. I'm going to drag it up, have it sew after the R. Then I'm going to grab the A and have it sew after the W. So now I'm just changing the sequence that things occur in this list, and that changes the sew out. So now I'm sewing from the center out, I'm sewing from the bottom up, and this is now 
ready to sew on a cap. And I did that um, simply by resequencing the elements in the design. So this doesn't have outlines. Um, if things have outlines or travel stitches, you need to be a little more careful with that uh, because you can end up with travel stitches on top of other pieces just by resequencing it. But in this case, everything was separated by a trim. Um, and I have that ability to resequence fairly easily just by dragging things in the list. So keep that in mind. You can resequence to affect how material pushes. So here we're pushing from the center out. Again, that's very, very important. And I said this is set up for a cap. This, just with how it pushes, would be fine sewing on a, a shirt. Um, so you, it, it pushes the material. Um, it's pushing away from what it's sewn before, so that's not going to be a problem with the shirt at all. Um, and this is a far more flexible design because it's sewing from the center out and the bottom up. And we did that with resequencing, and we did it a little bit with grouping elements to make our lives a little bit easier.